Hello and welcome to another episode of Darwin Investors. So a few days ago, a viewer posted this comment that said, USOI has done very well for me. And so because I do check out all my comments and I do look everything up, I looked up this USOI and when I did, it made my eyes just like pop out of my head. And I had to ask myself, what is USOI? What's the catch? You know, why does it pay such a high dividend? So I did some research on USOI and here's what I found. So first things first, let me walk you through what I found, and then I'm going to try to explain in the simplest possible terms exactly what USOI is and why they're able to pay this kind of dividend. So after reading this comment, I popped into USOI here in the Charles Schwab uh, research account here. I said, okay, it pays a monthly dividend. Um, the monthly dividend is what? <laughs> $1.36 and then $1.23, $1.76 a month. And this is a monthly payout per share, $2.65 a share. I said, how much is this thing? $83. It's $83 and it's paying out a $2.65 per share per month dividend. And then when I went even further back, I saw $5.96 a share, $4.55 a share, $3.95 a share. Again, paid out monthly. And I just was scratching. I, I couldn't figure out why this was paying such a high dividend. And just to give you um, a point of comparison, if we look at something like Chevron, which is a very good dividend payer, we can see that Chevron trades for $179.45 a share. It pays a quarterly dividend. This dividend is going to be $1.42. And of course, last quarter, it would be $1.42 as well. We look at other dividend payers, something like uh, Marathon Petroleum. More on them later on this video because I have plans for them next week. But they're $132.85 a share, and their month, their quarterly dividend is $0.75. Cents. Uh, Cardinal Health, which is another great dividend payer, dividend aristocrat, trades for $76.48 a share, and their quarterly dividend is, is $0.50. Cents. So we could see that um, with USOI paying um, a monthly dividend that apparently it seems at a minimum is a dollar 23 per share per month on an underlying security that only costs eighty three dollars and forty cents we can see that this one is a red hot deal so let's look in, into what exactly usoi is well usoi is is a, is brokered by credit suisse and it's a crude oil shares covered call etn and etn is exchange trade exchange traded note different from an exchange traded fund and we'll get into the semantics a little bit about this later but i don't want to muddy the waters too much but before we go any further in this video for the newer viewers we first have to talk about what a covered call is and for existing viewers we're going to get a much better idea about why usoi pays such a nice monthly dividend because the size of these premiums on this underlying equity called uso are very sizable so let's go ahead and check that out. So a USO ETF is what USOI trades covered calls on, and it gives us a portion of it. Uh, USO is an ETF. It's actually an ETP, an exchange traded product, different from an ETN, which is an exchange traded note, different from an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. But this is called an ETP, it's an exchange traded product. Now, if you're gonna buy this, rather than buying the stock, you're gonna say, I wanna sell a call on this. And this is what USOI does, it's a covered call ETN. So um, we would give this a, a termination date of say February 17th, and we're gonna sell it roughly 6% out of the money, so $70.50. Each contract represents 100 shares. For this, um, we're gonna sell this to open, and each share will pay us $2.04 premium which for an equity of this size, people that follow this channel know that $204 on a contract for an underlying that's only about a dollar out of the money, out of the money, not in the money, but out of the money is paying $204, that that is a very hefty premium. What this says is that if USO is below $70.50 by the 17th of February, I will get to keep all my shares of USO and your money. $204. If it finishes above $70.50, say $72, I still have to sell everything to you for $70.50. 
I get to still keep your money, but I have to sell all my shares for $2 less than what I could otherwise sell the shares for. It doesn't really matter because if I'm selling them for $72.50 and you've already given me $204 or $2.04 a share, my break even is $72.54. So I'm still making four cents on the deal per share. And that's what USOI is doing. So it's a, it's a crude oil shares covered call ETN. So let's talk about what an ETN is. First, we'll do it in this legalese speak, and then I'll do it in normal English. So what an ETN is, ETNs are senior unsecured debt securities issued by, in this case, Credit Suisse, acting through its NASA branch that provide a return linked to the performance of the price return of, in this case, WTI crude oil flows 106 index. ETNs may pay a variable monthly coupon based on the notional option premiums, if any, generated by the index's hypothetical monthly sale of call options on the shares of the USO fund. Right. So what they're saying is they're not really selling covered calls against USO. They're pretending to sell covered calls against USO, and they're doing it to 106%, the 106 index. So they're doing it to 106% of the underlying equity, in this case, the USO ETP. What is an ETP? Well, an ETP is similar to an option, except for that it uh, functions on commodities futures. Futures contracts are different from options contracts. Futures contracts basically guarantee a buyer a price, but you must buy it. Say you're a utility company, you're pretty risk averse. You want to balance your books ahead of time. You want to know exactly what you're selling natural gas for in March. You agree to buy that natural gas, let's say for $3 uh, a BTU or whatever units they're using. Uh, you, you agree to buy it for $3. So if natural gas is $3.50 a BTU, then um, you're going to go ahead and still get it for $3. However, if it's $2.50, you're still going to buy it for $3 and you have no choice. That's what a futures contract is. It locks you in. You have no choice but to buy it. An options contract gives you the option to buy it or you can buy your way out of the contract. So, But you don't have to buy it. Futures you do, options you don't. ETP, in this case, the USO fund is a commodities futures derivative and so they have to buy it. And an ETN trades options on ETPs. And that's what the ETN is. ETNs do not guarantee repayment of the investment amount, are not deposit liabilities, and are not insured or guaranteed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or any other governmental agency of the United States, Switzerland, or any other jurisdiction. Basically, your money is not guaranteed going into this ETN or going to USOI. It's kind of like a Bitcoin sort of thing. You're just crossing your fingers and hope they pay you if, if you know if everything goes pear-shaped. It's not guaranteed. So let's look at the index overview. The index seeks to implement a covered call investment strategy by maintaining a notional long position in shares of USO fund, ticker uh, symbol USO while notionally selling call options on that position on a monthly basis at approximately 6% out of the money, i.e. price 106%. The notional net premiums received, if any, for selling the calls are paid out at the end of each monthly period as distribution. The index's strategy is designed to generate monthly cash flow in exchange for giving up any gains beyond the 106% strike price. So it should uh, crude oil futures go up 120%, you're only guaranteed the premium from selling it over 106%. Um, but if it goes down, you get all of that downside. But if it goes up, you only get some of the upside. In exchange, you're getting a monthly payout of a notional call option, like we had shown earlier in the video with the covered call example. Sold 6% out of the money. All right, with all of that stuff out of the way, now let's talk about the returns of this uh, ETN. Uh, this year, it's actually had an annualized return of 33.24%.
it seems to go X sometime in the middle of the month. It's very sporadic, but it looks like if you get this thing by the 15th, you're pretty much safe to go X on this thing. And it will generally uh, speaking pay out about seven days after its X date. Um, like I said, the annualized return on this was 33.24%. Um, you can see that in June, it paid out $5.05 a share, July $3.39 a share, and so on and so forth. If we look at the year prior to that, we could see that it paid out $1.33 a share in December, $2.87 a share. So it's pretty consistent payer. So let's go ahead and see how USOI tracks relative to crude oil prices. Here's the one year chart of USOI. It looks like it started off the year about $105 and it ended up the year about $83. It looks like it was down 20.64% for the year. However, it did pay out a 33% dividend. So in this case, we would be ending up in the green. So let's go ahead and compare this to WTI crude oil. Well, we can see that what uh, WTI is the is the gold line and USOI is the blue line. And when and it does seem to, to, to track this pretty closely. So when crude oil goes up, USOI goes up. When crude oil goes down, USOI goes down. Given that the price of crude oil seems to be fluctuating somewhere between 70 and 100 dollars, it seems like if you were going to get into USOI, a good point to get into it would be somewhere here in the low 70s or high 60s should it get there. It looks like the low was 71.46 in December. What was it over here? Uh, 73.67 in January. So if you can get into USOI here around in the low 70s and high 60s, in addition to the nice monthly premium that you get from the dividend, you might also get some uh, share appreciation on your underlying, which is not expected. It's a nice bonus if you get it, though, I gotta admit. So what would happen if something happened like the when the when the oil went negative back in 2020? So when did the oil go negative? A historic drop occurred on April 20th when the price of West Texas intermediate crude dropped by almost 300% trading at around negative $37 per barrel. USOI was around at that time. Let's see what happened to the share price of USOI on April 20th of 2020 when oil actually went negative. Now from its inception, USOI tracked the WTI crude oil futures index very, very closely, you can see. And then all of a sudden, oil went negative here in April. So what did Credit Suisse do about this? Well, what had happened was if you look at the dividend returns in the year 2020, here in April, the underlying price went way down, but they paid a $23 a share dividend. And in May, it was $9 a share dividend. In June, it was um, $9 a share, and in March it was $6 a share. So what it appears that Credit Suisse did, in an effort to make up for this dramatic drop in the underlying share price, they paid huge dividends, I'm guessing, to maintain your business. I'm thinking they didn't have to do this. Um, credit to Credit Suisse, I guess. But it seems like this is kind of an honorable company, despite all of the headlines that we're hearing. So if they were trying to find a way to get the um, customer their money back. And I think that that's a pretty good thing. So let's go ahead and look at the returns month over month and year over year that I've calculated. I put together a quick little PowerPoint presentation here to do this. So. USOI returns the average price over the past 12 months of the underlying shares of USOI has been $98.60. Uh, they paid over the past 12 months $35.59 in dividends, giving you an annual distribution yield of 36%. I've updated it since that uh, last little presentation that they had on their website because that didn't include the latest month. 
In January 2022, um, USOI shares were trading for $105.20. They had a dividend payout of $2.98. With an with an it, at this rate, they would have paid out $35.76 with a 34% annual distribution yield. I do this quarterly. So in April, it was trading at $108.80. The dividend payout that month was $3.92. That would have given it an annual distribution of $47.04 and an annual distribution yield of 43%. So April, that quarter was a good quarter, as was the quarter in July. And, and so let's skip up here to October where the share price came down a bit to $85.70, uh, dividend payout $264, distribution yield was $31.68 with a 37% annual yield. Now, if you look at our current price, if you were to buy it today, and I wouldn't buy it today, I'd kind of wait for crude to come back down in the low 70s if you can help it, because you want a little bit of the underlying equity appreciation as well. But let's say you were to buy it today at today's oil prices, which is roughly $80 a barrel. Uh, the current price is $83.40. The latest dividend payout was $1.38. It had an annual distribution yield in this case of $16.56 or an annual distribution yield of 20%. Now it lost 20% last year, so you know it'd be pretty much a wash at this point. But it does seem that here, and it does seem every year even uh, this time of the year, the dividend payout seem to be a little bit lower. You may want to wait a little bit later to get into it. So here are the pros and cons as I figure with USOI. The pros are it pays a massive dividend and it has a monthly payout. So a lot of them are quarterly payouts. This one has a monthly payout and it's kind of like you can time it. You can get in there in the middle of the month, go X and then get your payout like a week later. The dividend does seem to outpace the underlying equity depreciation. So that's another positive as I see it. And it also seems to be a positive that Credit Suisse does seem to defend this ETN. They, they, they aren't going to like completely screw you like they could have done in April of 2020 when everything went negative. You were still getting a payout. So Credit Suisse actually seems to be a decent company despite all, despite all the headlines. The cons are, as it showed in the disclaimer, that the that your money is not FDIC insured and you could lose all of your money. And also it requires a very high risk appetite. Another con for me personally is that you can't sell options against USOI. Let me show you what I mean. So here I am at USOI. I can buy shares of it. Let's say I want to buy one, I can buy it. But if I want to sell a covered call against it, I can't do it. All I can do is buy the stock. And for me, that's a little bit of a negative because I don't like being at the mercy of the market. I like being able to play this market to some measure. You know, I like to be able to, even if my um, stocks don't go up in value, that I can at least try and get some money back because my strategy in the market is basically right now at least is to buy some of these more conservative plays right now it's energy and I guess in healthcare because I have uh, selling puts against um, cardinal health but mainly energy so my strategy right now is to take some of these more conservative plays because believe it or not you don't have to find beta just in growth companies right now you can actually find beta in some very conservative companies like chevron like exxon like marathon petroleum who's reporting this tuesday i've got my put sold on that and so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to gain my um dividends from these companies plus i'd like to get the premium from selling call options against these underlying equities and so in a way i'm tripling up i can get share appreciation i can get the dividend and i can get options premiums and so buying usoi kind of takes a little bit of that from me it lets me have some share appreciation which i don't expect to get and it doesn't allow me to sell options against it in the case that it goes down i can't lower my cost basis and for me personally that's a negative However, what do I plan on doing with this? Well, I'm gonna be waiting until crude oil drops under $75 a share. And then I'm only gonna buy small amounts of it. I just wanna kind of 
figure it out. Is it something that I like? Because it kind of goes against a lot of my strategy. It goes against getting the share appreciation and it goes against my being able to sell options to bring down my cost basis. Now, eventually, I do plan on getting to a 60-40 portfolio, equities to bonds, and I'm, what I'm calling bonds is going to be some of these high dividend players, namely JEPI and quite possibly USOI. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week, you know, out of respect for people's time, you know, I can keep on, if you know me, I can just talk and talk and talk, but I'm going to cut it off right there. Um, many thanks to Mark Miller for leaving that comment about USOI and really to all the subscribers. I never really thought this channel, <laughs> I know it's not a big channel by most people's standards, but it's way bigger than I ever thought it would get. And so cheers to you guys, Bob and Dave and, and Mark and the like. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Let's see here. This is um. Mm. That is Founders Porter. Love it. That's going to be today's sponsor. And until then, we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, and leave a notification bell. Have a great day. Bye.